Hello everyone. My name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will take a look at what are some of the popular Terraform interview questions and their answers. So this is just a part one of uh, Terraform interview series. We'll make subsequent videos in which I'll walk you through more Terraform interview questions and answers. So firstly, this is what we have for today. I try to put in 11 Terraform interview questions together and we'll take a look at each of them as practical as possible so that we'll try to cover a few scenarios as well. Firstly, what is IAC and why Terraform? So IAC is nothing but infrastructure as code and this is a process of managing or creating infrastructure uh, using code and not through the manual process. So basically uh, you automate your infrastructure using IAC. Terraform is one of the popular IAC tools that are available. So there are other IAC tools as well, like uh, for AWS, you have cloud formation template for Azure, you have resource manager for uh, OpenStack, you have heat templates. So there are a lot of other IAC tools as well. But the primary purpose of using Terraform is that Terraform works on the principle of API as code. That means Terraform is one single tool that can automate your entire infrastructure, whether it's cloud, whether it's on-premise, Terraform supports a lot of providers. So because it deals with the APIs, uh, whichever infrastructure tool or the IaaS or the PaaS tool that has APIs, Terraform can integrate with it to create the infrastructure. So before to IAC, probably you might be using some scripts or, you know, you use the uh, command line or you can also go to the AWS control plane or any resource control plane and create using some click of buttons. But using IAC, the entire process is automated. Second question, what are modules in Terraform? So basically in Terraform, uh, modules are nothing but logical grouping of resources. So let's assume that uh, I am working in an organization organization, and uh, I wrote a Terraform script uh, for creating EC2 instance and as well as creating an elastic load balancer and attaching it with the EC2 instance. So this is the script that I've written. And let's assume other team also wants to do the same thing. And there are a couple of other teams which also wants to do the same thing. So now instead of everybody writing the same thing, what you can do is that you can create a module of commonly repeated things. Okay. and you can call it a module and you can share it across with your other teams or within the same team. So this is the concept of module. It is a logical grouping of Terraform resources. Next question, what is state file in Terraform? So state file is one of the key components of Terraform. Uh, the thing that it does is it keeps a track of resources that Terraform is managing. So whatever the resources that you have created in Terraform is actually stored in the state file so that Terraform knows that, uh, you know, this is the resource that it is managing. And if someone tries to delete it or someone tries to create something new, Terraform says uh, that, you know, you are trying to create this or you are trying to delete this. So that's the purpose of state file. Next question. What are some of the most common Terraform CLA commands that you use every day? Okay. So in this case, you can simply uh, talk about uh, the Terraform CLI commands. There are not many, uh, but the things that we use uh, frequently are Terraform plan, Terraform apply, Terraform refresh, or Terraform init. So these are the things that you can talk about. If you want, you can also go into the details of each of them, uh, or if the interviewer is asking, you can simply talk about uh, the steps why you use uh, why you use this Terraform CLI commands. What is Terraform backend? Okay, so Terraform backend is nothing but uh, where Terraform stores its state file. Let's assume that uh, you are running Terraform on your laptop. So what basically happens is Terraform stores your state file on your disk that is on your laptop. So your laptop becomes your Terraform backend. Uh, so similarly, wherever you are keeping a track of your state file, wherever you are storing your state file, that becomes your Terraform backend. Next, what is Terraform remote backend? Okay, so remote backend is uh, one of the most asked questions because if you're working with Terraform in a team or you're collaborating with other people in your company on a uh, Terraform scripts, on some Terraform scripts. So that is when you have to use Terraform remote backend because if you're storing Terraform scripts on your disk or on some other place, on a common place, okay? So what happens is uh, both of you or 
some of the some of the colleagues might try to access access the terraform scripts at a time and you might be performing some conflicting uh, requests let's assume that i take the terraform scripts on my laptop and i'll try to create an ec2 instance and similarly other person uses the same same terraform scripts and uh, tries to delete the ec2 instance now aws is receiving a conflicting instruction from your terraform scripts so to avoid this what you do is you actually keep this terraform state file in a common uh, uh, remote backend that means on in aws s3 buckets or somewhere and you enable locking with it like you know you say that when one person is trying to access this terraform uh, uh, state the other person should actually get uh, you know that someone is trying to access so you need to wait so that is the concept of terraform remote backend how do you handle secrets in terraform okay so handling secrets is one of the uh, key concepts not only for terraform but for anything that you do probably if you are working on ci cd or you are working on ansible or you are working on kubernetes you need to have a common or you know you need to have an effective solution of handling sensitive information so in terraform how do you do is that uh, you can use terraform remote backend that we, as we discussed previously like you know instead of storing your terraform uh, state or scripts on your laptop what you can do is you can store your terraform uh, state file in a remote backend like s3 bucket and enforce it with strict iam or rbac like you know uh, make sure that only restricted people can access that s3 bucket read the uh, secrets in the state or you know only basically enforce it with a proper iam or rbac role based access control that's the efficient way of handling secrets in terraform next what is resource graph in terraform okay so resource graph is uh, nothing but you know it's it's internals of terraform uh, how terraform creates terraform plan it's a basically dependency graph that terraform is trying to build and using this dependency graph terraform will actually show the output of terraform plan or you know uh, terraform refresh or these kind of things so it's a dependency graph that uh, terraform builds next what is terraform state locking i think we just discussed about this one uh, it's the same thing why you use state locking is because uh, you don't want multiple people to run the terraform scripts at a time so that uh, your aws or your any provider does not receive conflicting information so when you are working in a team what you need to do is that when someone is running the terraform scripts you have to make sure that the other person should wait uh, until the execution is complete so for that you use terraform state locking one example is uh, dynamo db in aws so so you can use uh, dynamo db uh, and you can integrate it with the s3 bucket so that uh, it keeps a lock and track of who is running the terraform scripts next what is a tainted uh, terraform resource okay so you can use the uh, taint command in terraform to uh, on a particular object so that you know you can uh, degrade uh, so how do i put it okay so terraform taint command informs terraform that you know a particular object has been degraded or damaged so that uh, terraform marks this resource as tainted in the terraform state file and uh, next time uh, when you run the terraform plan or something terraform will uh, propose to replace this uh, object or you know terraform will try to tell you that you know this uh, resource is downgraded or damaged so that you need to take any action on that specific terraform resource next uh, this is the final question for today what is uh, terraform state rollback so this is uh, one of the rare things that you might want to do that you know you might want to uh, do a rollback of your terraform state uh, i would actually not suggest this instead you can uh, uh, fix it and you know you can create a uh, ad, like you know next stage of your terraform state instead of rolling back but if at all you want to roll back in terraform uh, let's assume that your terraform state is in s3 bucket okay so you are using a remote backend and you stored your terraform state in s3 so you know s3 is a versioned uh, thing like you know you, it keeps a copy of your current state and a previous state so what you can do is that you can use the aws uh, api or aws cli to get the versions of your s3 and uh, you can take a copy of your previous version let's say that your s3 has two copies only two copies so what you can do is you can take a previous copy of your s3 copy it in your local and then push your uh, local copy back to your remote i mean to the s3 so what happens in this case your 
old copy becomes the new one so in this way you can roll back and then simply run the terraform apply or whatever terraform plan and apply so in this way your terraform state can be rolled back so this is not a uh, thing that i would actually recommend to do but if at all someone is asking uh, you know how do you uh, do a terraform state rollback this is a method uh, that you can do if you are aware of any other things uh, let me know in the comment section i would be more than happy to learn so this is all that we have today uh, and uh, i'll get back to you with uh, other terraform interesting questions and answers uh, keep watching my channel thank you